So in Checkpoint, we look at the IoT market very diverse. We see that uh, people have their different opinion on what the T in, in IoT means. For some people, it's building automation. For others, it's uh, industrial automation. Effectively, they share a few common areas. One is that there's a, a large amount of them. Uh, so there's, there's instead of a few computers, there's maybe dozens or, or hundreds of devices. They uh, are not very well controllable, so it's hard to in install any additional security software on top. And uh, they're qu quite often handled by a different part of the network than the, the classic computer network administrators who are responsible for security. So IoT has always been very much of a functionality. Installed, it does what it needs to do, and it's uh, what they call in the industry a set it and forget it approach. If it works, don't touch it. If it ain't broke, don't touch it again. So in Checkpoint, what we feel like is this is going to change. Those networks are going to interweave. We see that the office automation will integrate with the uh, building automation, if you like. And both of them come with different characteristics where effectively they will find a need to share data together. So what you learn in one area, you also want to be able to apply in a different area to prevent the IoT part of your network to become a new attack vector that nobody has thought of before and a way for people to find access towards your data. Okay. Uh, and you've come up with something called nano-security and nano-agents. Uh, what's that? So in Checkpoint, we started building nano-security or uh, more specifically nano-agents to address the, the specific needs that IoT devices bring with them. So as we are not capable, like laptops, for instance, to install a full software package, we need to find a way to get as much of the power that we can address on the specific device in a deployment format, the way that things will work. So you can think of that such as uh, a plugin in a browser. It could be a lightweight agent that doesn't require administrative rights to install. It could also be a few lines of code that the application developer can embed into their device when they compile the application so that uh, if they want to, they can call on security as a service. So it's like checking a checkbox that says, I now subscribe to the security need. Your traffic will then be investigated by Checkpoint's technology in the cloud. So we are making that available via the internet where all of the IoT devices typically are connecting. And we make sure that depending on the power of the device, we either do the enforcement on the device itself or we do it from the cloud, preventing the uh, potential attack uh, to be mitigated before it actually happens. In doing that, specific technologies will, uh, will show themselves, such as uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, where you can, by monitoring the behavior of all of those nano agents that will be distributed, because they're much larger in number than classic gateways, we can monitor the behavior and there uh, start predictive models that explain to us that behavior is now deviating from what the standard is. And because of that, something must be going on, a trigger to either further investigate or when you're very rigid on security to simply stop that traffic because it's not uh, required in order to do the typical functionality. Okay. Uh, um and why is uh, nano-security and uh, uh, nano-agents uh, better than the other alternatives? Well, why would we build nano-agents? Basically, because nothing exists today. Today, what we see is that there's a very uh, lax attitude towards anything T, any, any things in IoT. Uh, that means that uh, equipment gets installed with default usernames and passwords. Uh, it gets installed without a mechanism to automatically update, even when security vulnerabilities have been found. And on many occasions, installed by a different team than the networking team, which is responsible for security. And because of that, uh, living completely in a parallel world. And the risk with that is at some point, we see that in order to do remote monitoring, for instance, they do get connected. So all of a sudden you have this fancy app on your phone that allows you to monitor your security cameras over the internet, which is brilliant. But if it also connects to your internal network, that's an attack factor potentially for people to break in and exfiltrate data f that is really building your business. Um, and how is this helping customers, you think? We feel this will help customers as they typically haven't thought about it yet. We're, today we're talking about a nano security with the first customers in the market. We're doing what we call early availability testing. So we build the, the basic of the, the technology, we expose it to customers, we go into their labs, we ask them, uh, play around with it. We have uh, regular calls to discuss how things are going. They feed us with a lot of needs that they have. So they get exposed to technology, their creativeness starts flowing and we can then obviously adopt whatever we, we, that we're building. 
What it will finally help them to do is to realize that uh, because of the scale of, of IoT, uh, traditional approaches are not going to work uh, from a management perspective, neither from a cost perspective, because it's going to be very expensive to do that on a, in a traditional way. So uh, they will find the need to secure themselves, uh, but it also has to be cost effective, of course. So moving forward, we will learn a lot more from, uh, from customers in doing this, but we already scaled it from where today we talk about 100,000 devices maybe to up to a billion devices that we can start managing per customer. So we are building the backbone that allows customers to be as wild as they want to be. Okay. So what do you think? Is uh, nano security and nano agents the future? I certainly believe <laughs> nano agents and nano security <laughs> will be the future for Checkpoint. Yes. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, do you have like three tips or recommendations for customers that want to uh, engage more in their um, IoT security? Sure thing. Um, when asked for three tips to secure IT networks, one of the first things I would say is segregate it from your, your existing IT network. So look at it as a functional network where IT, uh, the, the IP network is being used uh, to transport data, maybe to transport updates, but not gets uh, mixed with regular data in the regular business operations. Uh, secondary, I would um, have a policy that says whatever new device that enters your network has to be subject to the ability to change usernames and passwords because they're very easily found on the internet. And that's, the, that's like opening the front door and asking people to come in. So that's, that's the minimum value. And thirdly is to find a mechanism that allows you to monitor what's going on. Uh, so if you can't do anomaly detection right now, your trend analysis will give you uh, a tool in hand that will also increase the awareness uh, of the fact that uh, a new attack vector already was present in your network. You just haven't looked at it yet. Okay. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome.